Seven take one. Action. Excuse me. <laughs> Could you tell me which of these guys is Bruce Wayne? Well, I'm not sure. Thanks, anyway. You have to recognize that you're when you're making a movie, that you're in the selling business from the minute the movie gestates, from the minute the movie is announced, from the minute the first comments reach the press, there's an impression about the movie. And when you have a property that's a lightning rod, like Batman, when you begin to cast the picture, everybody has an opinion because they know what that character meant to them in their youth or has they read the comic or when they set the television show and they even question whether they should make it. Well, Michael Keaton was a was a firestorm of activity when, we, when he was cast. Well, Keaton was controversial at the time because everybody thought, Michael Keaton, that means the picture is becoming a comedy. Of course, Tim had just done uh, Beetlejuice with Michael Keaton, in which he was spectacular, but it's not the sort of thing that you would necessarily look at and say, oh, look, here's this guy, you know, this incredible physical comedian. It's not you instantly think, Batman. At first I thought it was a joke, and I laughed and said, yeah, Mr. Mom is Batman. That's very funny. When they explained that everybody was serious about this, I, my instantaneous response was like every fanboy. I was shocked. I said, oh my God, this can't become a campy Batman again. I remember that this was so newsworthy that the front page of the Wall Street Journal, of all places, had an article about what was wrong with us for choosing Michael Keaton to be Batman. You can't buy that kind of publicity. On the front page and the left column, to show you the level of celebrity it reached, said, what a ridiculous choice. This is the silliest choice. This is ridiculous. That's not where the character lies. Now, this is a, this is a major financial paper, an institution, talking about a creative enterprise. So the good news is they're talking about the creative enterprise. The bad news is they're creating questions in the part of the management. Oh my God, what are these folks doing who are managing our asset and our money? Us. So you always have that yin and the yang. You know, you get the noise, but you also get the light. It was kind of a shock to, to, to uh, some people when we cast Michael Keaton. And I, I did hear filtering back from America that, oh my God, you know, this is gonna be a disaster. It's gonna be like the TV show and blah, 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 blah. And they're just gonna camp it up and do the. But, you know, we, we knew that that wasn't the case. You know, I thought he was absolutely right for it. Tim saw something in Michael's eyes. Uh, they were very alive and interesting. And a lot of the time he was wearing a mask or a cowl and he needed what, what came from his eyes. I had cast Michael before that in a picture called Clean and Sober, and I knew he was a fine actor, but the eyes got him the job. It's like with Michael, you look at, you look at him and he's just got those eyes and he looks crazy and he looks just like, but he also doesn't look like a superhero. It's like, he looks like a guy who would need to dress up like a bat for effect. The comfort zone was, uh, was Tim Burton. I knew I at least, you know, could put my my, my trust in someone, uh, at least to some degree, you know, even though it was a huge challenge to him and a, and a risk to him too. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like that probably, but it, it was just a difficult movie to do and a big thing to pull off. When he called me and said, I'm, I'm doing Batman, I'd like to do it. Had it not been him, I, I wouldn't have even read the thing. But I figured if it's coming from him, this is worth reading. And then I knew immediately who this guy was. I just knew what, the plan, what I would have done. The risk came in because of the, I think, the scale of this thing. But if this character doesn't work, this movie doesn't work. Now, I kind of knew that, but I didn't want to think about that, or I was a dead man. What Michael Keaton captured was the traumatized Bruce Wayne, the neurotic Bruce Wayne, the Bruce Wayne who you could believe could at night put on a suit and go out and fight crime. Tim indicated, I, I don't exactly know how to put a serious actor into a Batman costume without getting inadvertent laughs from the audience. He said, but he did know that with Michael Keaton, they could create a portrayal of this driven and consumed Bruce Wayne, and audiences would go, yeah, yeah, he could do this, he would do that, and thus the suspension of disbelief. Michael Keaton has a quality, when I watch him, when I watch him as a, as a performer or as a personality, and even working with him while I was watching him, he has three qualities. He has a, there's a comic quality 
there's a uh, vulnerability, but there's also something underneath. You feel that there's something underneath going on. There's a mystery there. Michael was phenomenal. I, I adored him as Batman, and I know there had been some controversy, and you know some people had, they were very reserved about that, that choice at first. And I thought, I got it immediately. And there was something about Michael that I could just see as an, as an orphaned child. I bought it. I bought it from day one. Being a big fan of irony, um, I just think it's great from, you know, seeing, seeing back looking at it all. I, I just think this is great fun. But no real vindication. I mean, it wasn't all that severe, just people saying, I, don't, I mean, I'm, except for the hundreds of thousands of people who were protesting in the streets, I guess, you know. And when they hung me in effigy, that was a little, for me, harsh. 